In this task, we'll explore classifying the newly joined census data to make a map of total population. Here I have QGIS Desktop open, and I've set the projection for the map to Albers Equal Area. I'll style the data with a graduated renderer. So I'm going to go into the layer properties for this layer. Click the Style tab, and instead of a single symbol renderer, I'm going to choose a graduated. Here I'll specify the data column as CE2000T underscore PO. This is the population column. I'm going to choose this default blues color ramp and I'll click classify and click OK. Now this doesn't tell much of a story, this particular rendering. There's only a couple counties that pop out of the map on this out of the 3000 in the lower 48. So I'm going to go into the layer styling again and notice over here under mode, the default is equal interval. This means that the total range of values in each class is relatively equal from one class to another. Instead of this equal interval mode, now I'm going to choose natural breaks. And you'll see the values change, and I'll click OK. The natural breaks algorithm calculates natural groupings of a series of data values, and this certainly produces a more informative map, though very large population centers a little more visible now but it's still not where I'd like it to be. So I'm going to go back into the styling for this layer, and this time under Mode, I'm going to choose Quantile. This algorithm attempts to put the same number of features into each class. So I'll click OK. Now this is a much more informative depiction of the total population. Now that I know how I want to classify the data, I'll go in and I'm going to choose a different color ramp. Instead of this monochromatic um, light blue, dark blue, I'm going to choose a red to blue. And click OK. Let me open up my layer properties again and show you one more thing. Under this classification, here under values, you're seeing the values that are used for each class, and those are duplicated under legend. But legend is actually something you can change. I can go into here and I could call the lowest population counties rural, for example, and I could call these urban at the top. So you can go in here and you can change the values in this so that they're more informative or more meaningful to your map reading audience. If nothing else, you can go in and put thousand separators into these values. If you're going to leave numbers in there, this makes the numbers easier to read. So you can go in and change those values under legend to match something that would mean more to your map readers. I'll click OK on that, and you'll see those values change here in the layer panel for that layer. So what we've generated here is known as a chloropleth map or a data map. It's where we're mapping a data value across multiple features. In the next lab, you'll do more work with tables. You'll learn how to perform attribute queries and queries based on location.